Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 and 11. The rain makes the earth fruitful, thus says the Lord. Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my, shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I send it. Have you ever asked yourself where water comes from? Wikipedia tells us that water is an inorganic, transparent, tasteless, odorless, and nearly colorless chemical substance, which is the main constituent of Earth's hydrosphere and the fluids of most living organisms. It is vital for all known forms of life, even though it provides no calories or organic nutrients. You might say it can be manufactured in a lab by scientists combining hydrogen and oxygen and you would be right. This can be done but in a did way, with expensive equipment and source materials and isn't cost effective. You might say cruise ships do it all the time and you would be partially correct. Cruise ships can make fresh water by heating sea water, collecting condensation, or using osmosis filters but who made the sea water? God did, but why? To sustain the life of his creation. The NASA graphic water cycle, to the right explains how water is recycled naturally, but who keeps the cycle working perfectly, God does. Oh, that's just how nature works you say, well who invented nature? In today's reading, Isaiah is making the point that water in the form of either rain or snow, fall from heaven, to the earth, sustains living organisms, it waters the fields thus supporting agricultural benefits that in turn produce, both seed to plant again and food to eat. Verse 11 tells us that God sent his word down from heaven, just like the snow. Just like the rain and snow, it will return to him and not be void. In this context the use of the word, void, means having no legal force or effect, not legally binding or enforceable. The rain and snow fall from heaven, and they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful. The word of God also came from heaven and spiritually feeds the people forever. Evangelization is a difficult task, but one God wants us to do. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. In 1 Corinthians 3 verses 6 and 7, St. Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Paul had planted the seed of faith, in the field, the community, in the world, which God had created, and then moved on to another field or community. Apollos, Paul's disciple, continued his Paul's seeds of faith with the water of his God-given ability to preach. Because of Apollos' work in the community, Paul's seeds of faith sprouted, as God had intended when he sent Apollos, to water the field Paul had planted. Paul humbly recognized it's not important who does the planting, or who does the watering. What's important is that God's seed, his word, is planted. Once God's word is planted, he will provide all that is necessary to bring the crop to maturity, but you still need to plant the seed of faith wherever you go. God waters your seeds of faith you planted, in your family, your friends, your community nation in which you live, it is up to us to sow the seeds, so he may water them with his word.